Welcome to another segment of Coaching in the Bigs. I'm Paul Anacone with my friend Danny Valverdu. We're going to go through the ins and outs of coaching subtleties here. Tell me, if you can, if you have a philosophy, your coaching philosophy, what would it be? For me, it's all about the day-to-day. -day. Um, I think uh, the day-to-day, -day, sometimes people underestimate the importance of building something strong every day and taking, even if it's a small step forward, but trying to take a step forward every day. Danny, you've had great success with Andy Murray, Thomas Burdick, and now Grigor, and you talk about that base, the foundation. Yeah. How do you alter your message to meet those personality needs? I think you have to be flexible. Everyone has a different personality. Everyone takes messages in different ways. Uh, you need, for me, at the beginning of the relationship, I spend a lot of time talking to the player, trying to understand. Getting to know them, yeah, right? Tr trying to understand uh, how, the, how they click in a positive way. I like to look at the strengths. Uh, when you're working with top 10 players, a lot of people try and focus on the weaknesses and forget, uh, forget uh, how, how they got to that place. Exactly. Then once I feel that they're not know that they're at their best, but that their strengths are clicking the right way, then you can start improving some other areas. At this level, how much of the coaching is mental versus physical? I would say it's mostly mental. You're right. Uh, I, like I said, I mean, these guys, they're so good already. Uh, they've been in the top 10 for a long time. I think you're more managing an athlete. You need to try and find a way to get them to practice hard, but not for them not to get too much into their own heads uh, before they start the tournament. One of Grigor's biggest assets is he can finish at the net. He yeah. volleys great. Mm -hmm. Is there a philosophy that you have to try to utilize that skill set? How do you see him trying to come forward, and should he come forward more? I think he needs to get to the net more. Uh, he has the ability to do it. He's a quick player. He has a quick first step. I think it, it will be a, a very important asset for him to have, especially to, to go deep in, in the big events. Do you remember back in your playing days, when perhaps you got a good message from one of your early on coaches that resonates that you still use today with any of your players? For me, the time that is not so much when I was playing, but when I was working with Andy and I was working with Ivan, I, I got a lot of things from him. One thing that Ivan says is, uh, when you've done the right work, let the cars fall where they want to fall. To give them that, that sense of relief before they step on court, look, we've done everything we can. Trust your game, first instinct, go for it. You've done the work, we've played all the patterns already. Try your best and see what happens. You talk about adversity and pressure moments? Yeah, all the time. All the time we talk about what's happening during the match and how it might feel in a big match. Right. And, and what he's been doing to get him to that stage in the set and what he needs to do to finish the set. And, and you try and get this in their head as much as you can. So when, when it comes to a big moment, uh, they know what to do and they know what they're going to feel in that situation as well. So it doesn't feel too foreign when, uh, when they're in that situation. Thanks a lot for the time today. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Appreciate man. it. Thanks. Thank you.